With the thumbnail, you can see that we're going to be talking about a refresh or redo on our camping gear. I want to show you the things that we've decided to weed out, uh, the reasons why, the things we've added. I also want to go into packing. You know, we went from the Bumblebee to camping off of the Black Pearl, and there's quite a few differences between those two bikes. So guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing my camping gear video once again. My previous uh, camping gear video I put out about five years ago. Uh, since then, Roxy and I have made several updates, made some changes, additions, and I want to share that with you here in what I'm going to call part two or Clem and Roxy's camping gear redo. So my plan here today is to break up this video into specific sections as it relates to sleeping arrangements, as it relates to housing, uh, kitchen, uh, miscellaneous camp gear. Uh, I'll talk about packing and I'll talk about uh, specific things as it relates to motorcycle equipment that needs to go with us while we're camping. In each one of the sections, we're gonna be talking about experience over the past five years. We'll be talking about additions, deletions, and our recommendations. So let's first talk about sleeping. You know, the initial gear that we purchased and used for a couple of years and, and what we learned a lot from was we went with Thermarest self-inflatable mattresses here and, and we set those up on top of, uh, again, Thermarest sleeping cots. And there was a, quite a bit of setup time to be able to do this. And then, you know, initially we had, uh, and we still do, we had two sleeping bags, each with their own Sea to Summit compression sack. Since then, we found a way to, to take these and compress them, both sleeping bags, into a single. So we're constantly trying to compress and, and minimize and, and take advantage of the, the limited space we have on the bikes. And so these are, they take a lot of time to set up, a lot of time to take down. And to be honest, they're only good, in my opinion, for those people who like to sleep on their backs and don't roll around much. And I don't know too many people who are able to sleep on their back and not roll around in the middle of the night. So over the past couple of years, we decided to uh, delete this portion of our sleeping gear. And you can see how much volume this takes up. And we've gone back to a more traditional air mattress situation, which, you know, these have their own pluses and minuses. So we bought these two Nemo uh, inflatable uh, mattresses, they definitely have their pluses and minuses. If you're there for a period of time or a period of days, you're always going to have to reinflate and build them back up. Uh, you know, when you've got a nylon covered uh, down sleeping bag, they tend to slip around on top of these uh, inflatable mattresses. Uh, in addition to that, uh, they tend to slip apart when we're trying to sleep next to each other. So what I've done to try to make this more stable is I've applied a couple of strips of Velcro to allow these to be uh, fastened together as, as one complete mattress, and it just makes it a little more stable. As far as sleeping comfort, I'll say that they're similar. Uh, they still have their negatives, but as far as packing space, this wins hands down. We still use uh, inflatable pillows. You know, we've got a Seat of Summit. We bought two initially. Uh, one of them, after a number of years, finally gave out or punctured. Or, so I went back and bought a Trekology pillow trying to save a few dollars. That was probably a mistake. Uh, go ahead and spend the money and buy the Sea to Summit inflatable pillows. So as far as sleeping, that's what we have. As far as recommendations, you know, I would say go with the tried and true. Uh, there aren't many secrets out there as it pertains to sleeping unless you have more space on your bike. Um, but for my money, I would stick with kind of the tried and true, the backpacking sleeping gear that gives you the, the minimal space on your bike. Okay, now, so let's talk about housing. Uh, when I say housing, I mean, you know, tent and weather protection. So as far as, uh, you know, first, a tarp on the ground that costs you 8 or $10 that you can punch your stakes through when you're staking your tent down, uh, that's a no-brainer. It doesn't take up much space. You can roll it up pretty dense and pack it away. So you always need that. 
We're still using the Kelty Trail Ridge 3. It's a three-man tent. We've used this equipment all over the country uh, from Key West to Ohio and several places out west. And so it's, it serves its purpose. It does its job. It keeps us dry in, in all those climates. And again, it's a, a three-season tent, and that's what we use it for. I'm happy that it does what it's intended to do, keep us dry, keep us comfortable. It fits pretty densely in the motorcycle, doesn't take up much space. And, uh, you know, again, I would recommend this or any other of the, uh, you know, better quality tents out there. Now, I want to spend a little time on this uh, Noah's tarp. Now, I'm going to show some pictures uh, from some of our camping trips for, again, a lot of this gear. But this doesn't take up much space, but the, the poles do. But, you know, I've come to realize that it's well worth it for what we use it for. Initially, I bought this to provide a little more weather protection to provide another layer of rain protection. What I've learned is that I use it much more to provide shade. And I'll show you some photos of various camping trips and locations around the country where we needed shade. And so this thing was a lifesaver when it came to uh, protecting us from the sun. Uh, the challenge here is you need some pretty sturdy poles to go along with you. Some campsites, you've got a tree you can tie a, a string to. Uh, a place you can uh, pull down a, a stake into the ground, but good sturdy poles that go with it are a must. And those are a challenge. You know, you can see the size of these uh, to put on the bike. And I'll show you pictures of how I attached it to the bumblebee. Uh, I haven't used them yet on uh, the Black Pearl yet, but I've got to find a way that I can take these along on that bike as well. But there's going to be times when I think these are critical. So I've really enjoyed this tarp. Packing it is a little bit of a challenge. So as far as recommendations, additions, deletions, um, at the end I'll go in a little more detail, but I, you guys saw on one of my videos where I was talking about maybe adding a Bush Tech trailer to pull. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that. What I found is the tent is, you know, for me it's a challenge to crawl in and out of it. Uh, I would love to have a tent that I can stand up in, and I think I'm going to go that route here in the not-too-distant future. As far as these items, I will maintain and always use some type of a tarp for sun, and in a bad weather situation, I'll put it over the tent for an added layer of protection. Okay, so the next section I want to talk about is kitchen. Now, you haven't seen this from us before. When we bought our original camping gear over five years ago, we would basically have to go to a restaurant or we would have to bring along uh, some sandwiches or we did have this ice mule, we'd pack along some lunch meat and or we'd buy some on the way to our campground and we'd make sandwiches. But basically we just had the ability to have some cold items, uh, snacks, that kind of thing. Weren't able to cook on our campsite originally. Since then, the big addition has been that we went out and we bought a jet boil. And I won't go into a lot of detail about these. These are these are widely seen. You can see these on all over the internet and all over YouTube. And so what we did initially with jet boils, we did what everybody else does. We boiled water, uh, we rehydrated like mountain house meals, and, and those things, you know, that got old very quick. They tasted awful, um, but you know, they, they did in a pinch. And so what we did, as well as we'd boil water and we'd make uh, instant oatmeal in the morning, you know, it made a, a, a much better addition to our eating at campsite than initially when we had nothing but cold sandwiches and some chips and a few cold drinks. So we bought a jet boil. Uh, you can see the other things we have with us. You know, this little four or five dollar uh, table, uh, plastic table cover for most campgrounds have uh, picnic tables. And then we take along spices and, you know, Roxy being Chinese, she is a, a tremendous chef when it comes to putting together meals. And so, uh, we'll take along some little plastic containers with some soy sauce and spices and the like for cooking, cooking oil. And then, uh, you know, like I say, we have the jet boil here uh, that we can boil water in. But the real key we use the jet boil for is we have this, we have this little 8-inch uh, nonstick pan that we use multiple times a day, maybe for breakfast. I'll cook eggs in it uh, in the evening. Roxy will take and stir fry some chicken breast, some vegetables. Uh, additionally, we've got this Sea to Summit uh, kit. So this Sea to Summit expandable pot, it's got a metal bottom, it sits on the jet boil. 
you know, we can cook rice in it, uh, pasta, anything like that. So it makes a good addition to, you know, to when we're stir frying a, a vegetable or the like there. So, you know, with that and a few utensils, a chopping knife and a little small cutting board, we can go to the market about every other day that's close by a particular campsite or campground and we can buy uh, you know, a small piece of pork, some, some chicken breast, some vegetables. We come back and have a really nice stir fry and uh, with a couple of, couple of dishes. And so it makes camping a whole lot more fun when you can have a nice meal. And again, Roxy is ideal when it comes to preparing and being a chef, producing really nice uh, Chinese meals for us. Additionally, we got a couple of plastic plates. Again, with the Sea to Summit kit, you've got expandable bowls and expandable cups and then uh, you know again some utensils so that's kind of our kitchen it doesn't take up a lot of space it packs down really tight and I really recommend something similar to this now recommendations going forward if we do decide to go with a, a larger tent and a small camp trailer that I'd pull with the bike like a bush tech we'll most likely buy a small uh, flat type two burner propane stove that we could take with us as well. That will allow us to have a little broader uh, set of equipment as it, it pertains to meals. So that might be an addition we make and that might be a recommendation again depending on what you have. What we have learned recently is we need a, an expandable uh, little pan in order to wash our dishes. Generally you can't wash your dishes around uh, potable water uh, in, within uh, campgrounds. So we need to, something we put water in, go out to another location, uh, and clean up our cooking equipment. Okay, so now let's talk about some miscellaneous uh, equipment that we take with us. So microfiber towels are a must. They dry out quickly, uh, they take up no space, and, and they're absolutely required when it comes to camping gear. We've got a little small light that we take, uh, battery powered, opens and closes. We tie it off into the top of the tent on the inside. It stays there with the whole trip. Uh, just on and off occasionally as we need it in the middle of the night for, for light. Uh, you know, the old standby headlamps, they're a must. Uh, nothing really to say there other than pack extra batteries. Uh, you know, we've got, a little, we've got a little lighter here when we start a campfire. Uh, typical little small uh, brush to clean out the tent when we're packing up and leaving. Uh, we generally will keep, uh, you know, a high percentage DEET uh, bug spray. Uh, we'll also keep another bag with sunscreen, that type of thing. You know, I've got some cotton balls here that are kind of absorbed with uh, alcohol. They're great fire starters for a campfire. And just some basic uh, tape, and I'll take a little duct tape like that, pack small. Um, and this hatchet, we've had this over five years when we initially bought our camping gear. It's called a Fisker X7, ideal split wood drive uh, stakes for tents and tarps, an absolute must. We bought these Trekology chairs. Uh, these are half the price of uh, you know, what you find at REI or, or some of the name brand uh, uh, camp chairs, foldable chairs. I'll split away and show you some pictures of a lot of this stuff set up uh, in the video. Uh, but for the most part, this is some of the other miscellaneous equipment we take with us. Again, small packs, uh, real light, and is ideal for camping. Now as it pertains to the motorcycle, this is not intended to be a, a motorcycle maintenance video, but I just want to just outline, show you some of the things we take with us uh, that, for the bike, because the bike is an integral part of what we're trying to accomplish on this trip. So I'll first start off with, uh, this is a full cover for the bike, uh, weather uh, protection. It hides the bike a little bit, makes it a little more out of sight, out of mind, you know, in various campgrounds. It's very light. Uh, packs up relatively small. It's a full cover, less than $100, uh, but well worth it. So we always take a little bike cover with us. So we have two little storage pouches on our uh, saddlebag guards, and these are typical Harley brand, uh, but they allow us to take some things that are heavy, keep them down low. And so what I take is a, a small air pump here that'll plug into the bike. It's, this one is, happens to be a cycle pump brand, uh, but I always take something because it seems like tire pressure is always a critical piece of the bike. So I take that and I'll show you where I store it. And then, you know, I've got a cruise tool, uh, Harley specific tool kit. It slides in another one of the Harley storage compartments on 
uh, the other side of the bike. Uh, so very minimal stuff, but things that I think are important. You need to be able to cover your bike, I think. Uh, it's not an absolute must, but it's very helpful when you get up in the morning. You need to be able to take care of your tire pressure, and you need to be able to do minimal maintenance if something comes up. Okay guys, so let me just talk a little bit about packing. Uh, I'm going to take uh, my camera, walk around and show you some of the things and areas that we pack. Uh, I'll say the things that you see on any motorcycle packing video. Uh, pack light, uh, put the heaviest items down low, keep your center of gravity down low, and those are the ideal. But I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not that easy, uh, especially with two up camping. So now we do it, our camping exclusively off the Black Pearl. That's a 2020 limited. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we pack it and some of the things we do. So we'll fill up the saddlebags with the heavy items, our tent, uh, our hatchet, our camp chairs, anything that we don't need to touch until we actually get to the campsite. I don't want to have to get into my saddlebags with anything I need during the trip getting to the campsite. And it may be one or two day trip to get to where we're going. Now, these are the bags I was talking about where I store my tools. These are just Harley brand uh, leather bags. So I'll put, you know, I've got an air compressor, small one that'll pack in there along with a, uh, with, a, with a tester. So I'll pack my air compressor in this side and then over on the other side, an identical bag for the right side and I'll put my tool kit and uh, tie wraps and just various small items in that particular pouch. On the tour pack itself, You'll see it talks about a, a, a 10 pound recommended limit on that tour pack rack. So me and Roxy, we bought this Rick Rack bag probably a couple of seasons ago, and it's been the best investment I can think of in the recent past for this bike. So we put some camping gear, maybe our kitchen, some maybe some uh, light food, but it gets pretty darn full. And I would say that this thing probably exceeds the capacity of that rack or at least the recommended from Harley by at least four times once we fill it up. So everything we take camping has to fit just as you see it right there. So the way we pack it is we put the things in the saddlebags that we're not going to touch until we get to the campsite. Likewise in the in the tour pack proper we never open that until we get to our campsite. We put our rain suits inside one of these saddlebags, but on the top, and that's the only thing we would ever need to get to should we have to stop and get under an overpass and put on rain suits. That Rick Rack bag is the only thing we get into, whether it be in the side pockets or need to get something out of the top um, or in these uh, uh, back pockets. So for quick access, that's what we put in here. Otherwise, we never have to get into it. Guys, thanks for staying with me this long. I know this has been a long video, but I hope it's helpful. So please go in and, and fast forward to the sections uh, that you want to see the most based on the index I put at the beginning. Uh, but listen, I appreciate it. So guys, thanks for coming along with me and Roxy. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. Uh, please hit the bell icon and give us a thumbs up. We'll be glad to answer any questions you put out there in the comments. Next time, y'all come get on the road and go with us camping. <laughs> it's too cold in the autumn.